in their complete desperation to maintain power, the Justice Democrats are now on the warpath to get voters enthusiastic to support them. However, with the Justice Democrats, brand new Congress, our revolution, DSA, AOC, Jamal Bowman, Rashida Tlaib, everyone else who's part of that great coalition. Sorry to tell this to you, but uh, a lot of people have left the Democratic Party. A lot of people are not excited for the Democratic Party. Voter turnout is at an all-time low for this election cycle. Gone are the days of the excitement of the 2016 uh, primary. Gone are the days of the 2018 midterm election cycle. Gone are the days of the 2020 election cycle as well. Because since then, 2020, and yes, even now in the 2024 primaries, voter turnout has been at an all-time low. Pathetically low. Like it's reaching shallow waters. Hell, you might as well be on dry land and then fall into a deep, deep hole. That's where the Democrats are at. Especially the Justice Democrats. And as have many of you said before, as well as many other commentators and other people on social media. If the progressive Democrats are so appalled by the actions of their colleagues in the Democratic Party for them being associated with APAC, then leave the Democratic Party and form your own movement and organization, which is something that many others have said, most notably Jimmy Dore, Do Dissidents, RBN, us here at Hardlands Media, start creating movements and organizations not connected to the two-party system, especially with the Democrats who like to hide behind their neoliberal mask and say they care, th care about things like Medicare for all, student debt forgiveness, a fair economy, our infrastructure, ending wars, which, well, they're never going to follow through us because the Democratic establishment wrapped itself around Justice Democrats, brand new Congress, our revolution, DSA, and all these other quote unquote progressives. Never forget, we needed them for force to vote. But now because APAC is now using all of its money to go after the Democrats, especially the Justice Democrats or those associated with the Justice Democrats, this just came up onto my feed, and I just felt it's important to share with all of you. As the United Demo Democracy Project threatens to spend $100 million in Democratic primaries this cycle, let's pull back the curtain on APAC. What you'll find is a web of Trump megadonors, GOP billionaires, insurrectionists, and anti-abortion extremists. Time to reject APAC. Now, wait a minute. Hold up. Hold up. Why are so many Democratic politicians afraid to speak out against the Israeli government? <laughs> One Republican-funded acronym, APAC. The American-Israel Public Affairs Committee. For decades, the APAC lobby has built a massive federal operation and sharing unconditional political and financial support for the Israeli government and military. This is my 34th year hanging out with APAC. Now, APAC is planning to spend $100 million against a handful of black and brown Democratic incumbents. Where is this money coming from? Well, nine of the top 10 donors to APAC's Super PAC, the United Democracy Project, are Republican billionaires and Trump mega donors. Huh. I wanted to pause here because I want to pull this up here from the Instagram. Let's see. Look at this right here. This is from Instagram, of course. We've got Ted Cruz, Republican. Chantel Brown. Didn't she face off against Nina Turner? She's a Democrat. We got Richie Torres, Democrat. Hey, our, our, our guy Jose Vega is going up against him. We got Chucky Boy Schumer getting that APAC track money. Look at that. One thousand one million. Sorry. One million seven hundred twenty five thousand three hundred twenty four dollars. Look at this. Richie Torres. One million two hundred. $13,154. <gasps> Joe Biden, 11 million. Look at that. Dave Thorne. Look at this. John Fetterman. Democrats. Hey, there's Mike Johnson. He's a Republican. There's Mama Bear Nancy. Nancy Pelosi. Look at that. So it, it's, it's almost as if key high profile people in the Democratic Party take that APAC money too. The same donors funding anti-abortion, anti-IVF, pro-NRA Republicans. That's not surprising when you learn that APAC endorsed 109 insurrectionist Republicans who voted to overturn the 2020 election. You can't be pro-insurrection and pro-democracy. You can't be pro-insurrection and pro-America. Maybe Biden should tell that to his friends at APAC. 
While voters watch in horror as American tax dollars fund Israel's massive killings. Now, I just want to pull this up here. Shout out to Nick. Israel openly, openly bragging about rigging United States elections. Completely absurd. Americans put up with this for so long. And this is being pro-Israel is good policy and good politics. 40 out of 40 APAC endorsed Democrats have won this year, including 36 Equality Caucus members, 20 CPAC members. Oh, my goodness. 14 Hispanic Caucus members. 11 U.S. progressive members, and 8 black caucus members. 100% of APAC-endorsed Democrats have won their primary this cycle. Justice Democrats, what's going on? APAC's only remaining tactic is to silence Democratic incumbents with multi-million dollar primaries funded by Republican dark money. We call on all voters, elected officials, and political organizations to reject APAC. Reject candidates handpicked and bankrolled by Donald Trump's donors. Reject silence as tens of thousands of Palestinians are murdered. When we reject APAC, we're one massive step closer to rejecting the grip of all corporate super PACs on our elections. Now look, rejecting APAC sounds great. But when you have a democratic system, an election system in which your own party, the Democratic Party, is also connected to it, why would you be associated with it? Look at this. Being pro-Israel is good policy and good politics. 40 members, 40 out of 40 AIPAC-endorsed Democrats. Many of these 40 out of 40 AIPAC Democrats are in positions of power. And we have told these progressive lawmakers Maybe it's time to ditch the Democrat Party. But t try to tell that to Chantel Brown. Now, of course, you see the Republicans here, too. You see that there's Chucky Boy Schumer, there's Richie Torres, Joe Biden saying it ain't so, David Thorne say it ain't so, John Fetterman say it ain't so, Nancy Pelosi say it ain't so. But there they are. There they are indeed. I want to pull up this video here. You want to see how many congressional candidates are on Apex payroll for the 2024 election? Just over 400. We're going to mute this for copyright music, but all this other good stuff. But look at that. Money was pro-Israeli message. By contributing to candidates through the APAC political portal, you send a clear and powerful message that you stand with them because they stand with Israel. Which, okay, there they go. Look at all this. Hey, here we go. Look at that. You see, wow, Republican, Republican, Democrat, Republican, Republican, Republicans, eh? a lot of Republicans. Uh, look, look, uh, there are a couple of Democrats flying on by. Look at that. You see the blue and the red. The blue and the red. Is, isn't that great? Look at that. Bipartisanship. Who says that Democrats and Republicans can't get along? Who says that these jag-off politicians can't see things out? Wait, did I see our good friend Dan Crenshaw? I think I did. There he is. There's our boy. Look at this. All these quote-unquote politicians now the squad is asking us for help though what they want is help it's the home stretch to help reelect summer for pennsylvania summer lee sign up now and call voters in pennsylvania but really is is it too little too late i want to just pull uh just this one video segment of jamal bowman calling in as they are doing this stand with the justice democrats you should be good to go now. Can you hear us? Okay, awesome. Mic check one, two. What's up, everybody? Good evening, good evening, good evening. Good to be with you all. Uh, shout out to Elise. Thank you so much for those kind words, and thank you for that warm introduction. Uh, thank you for being the relentless fighter and organizer that you are for climate justice, for racial justice, for the people of Gaza, and just for humanity. I appreciate you so much. And it's been great working with you over the last year. So are you going to call it a genocide? But then anyways, 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 what more do you have to say, Mr. Bowman? Because it looks like you're going to be struggling in your election. There is a change, even though it feels like it's been longer. 
Shout out to JD, my home girl, Rojas. Good to see you as always. Thank you for all you do for JD and for all you do for all of us uh, in the squad here in Congress and for what you have already done for this country uh, and what you will continue to do for this country. And of course, shout out to my sisters in the squad. Uh, I'm very proud to still be the only man in the squad. Uh, that's what they say. Uh, but I'm very proud to, to carry that mantle with my sisters. Um, it's great to be with you all. You know, this is, this is an urgent time, obviously. Um, the last several years of all of our lives have been incredibly urgent. When you think about, you know, what we're fighting for as it relates to climate justice, when you think about what we've been fighting for as it relates to police reform and justice reform, you know, after George Floyd was killed, uh, when you think about the issue of wealth and equality and, and ensuring that the one-tenth of one percent don't continue to destroy our country by controlling what happens in Congress and our fight to get big money out of politics, our fight for a Green New Deal, our fight for Medicare for All, and just our fight for justice and humanity. This might be the biggest challenge uh, we faced up until this point because we have APAC and DMFI and many others pledging to spend at least $100 million to get us out of office. And the Now, the thing is, like any politician, he has that right to start demanding and or asking for help you know he, to reach out to his quote-unquote supporters the voters the people who you would think in theory would stand in solidarity with him however 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 we ask the squad to stand in solidarity with us now many people especially those in my audience you have seen firsthand just how sick our system is never forget corporate media was in absolute shock 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 of oh my goodness there's a potential threat that russia is interfering in our elections which as it turned out over time that was a complete myth a legend fraud that helped lead us into this crisis that we are in today but just so that all of you are aware of this apac has been and other pro-israeli groups have been doing this for years years upon years decades dare i say it and when we ask these quote-unquote progressive democrats to stand with us they said no. They refused. They still played the game with many of these Democrat politicians, the establishment hack frauds. And there were many people that carried water for the Democrats. Never forget that when we asked them to fight for us for force to vote, they would not bring the ruckus. And we asked them to bring the ruckus numerous times. I want to pull up this old school video. This old school video was Matt Orfala. Never forget. Never forget this. Never forget. We can't even get a floor vote on Medicare for all. That's garbage. You can do it right now. <laughs> we need 15 Democrats. I, Jimmy. We need the elected officials that you helped get elected to tell Nancy Pelosi that you will not vote for her as speaker unless Medicare for all is put on the House floor for a vote. I think it's a really smart idea. You know, the worst abuse of power, Crystal, is not using the power you have to fight mm. for people. Will they? Time to let AOC see no they have no other option because we're watching and we see through their bullshit excuses we have to put public pressure on them i want to see who's going to vote against health care in the middle of a pandemic if you're not going to do it now you are never going to do it you phony all the people who filled up your voicemail they're going to remember whether you did the right thing here which side are they really on this is where you force progressive house members to reveal who they answer to do they answer to their constituents or do they answer to the party bosses listen to aoc's own words the democratic party does not do more unless it is pushed and so this moment is the great unmasking force it to happen ask them are you fighters or are you careerists are you activists for the people or are you posers on twitter everyone's gonna try to tell you that if you're just a little bit nicer then it'll be fine no the whole point of protesting is to make people uncomfortable you got to make them uncomfortable she's pretending to be part of a movement when she's really running cover for nancy pelosi did you think anybody voted for you so you could vote nancy pelosi without getting them anything <laughs> This is Medicare for all. People's actual lives depend on us doing this. Yeah, exactly. Now it's your chance to actually use your leverage. Will you? Take risks. Or will you be a party fucking climber? Start bringing the ruckus on the Democratic Party.
force it to happen. Do not trust any political party to automatically work in your interest. I call on everybody in independent media to join this mission. Force it to happen. Force the Congress to show which side are they really on. No vote for Nancy Pelosi unless Medicare for all is put on the House floor for a vote. The Democratic Party does not do more unless it is pushed. So we need to push them. Man, great job, Matt. He goes by the name Orf. Wonderful. Well done, Matt. And that, that video still resonates today. I want to pull up again more of the word salad from Jamal Bowman. Never forget, we asked them for help. And they said no. We got them into office and they forgot us. We asked them to sit down and speak to us, to reach out to us. And they said no. They always kept on saying no. And when we finally started to become more vocal, they said, we're being violent. We're not being appropriate. The reason they are doing this, as we all know, is because we are speaking truth to power. We are speaking truth about power. We are challenging their power and we are taking their power away from them in real time. Sorry about the fire engine in the back. Um, so we are taking their power in real time. And so because of that, they are pushing back with everything they have. But what they have is money. We have people and we have compassion and we have care and we have humanity at the forefront of our movement. The reason why we do what we do is because we actually really care about this country being the best version of itself. We actually care about saving lives in Israel and Gaza. Really? You do? You care about saving lives? Then why is it that you haven't done anything really to stop this war? Oh, it's because, again, your colleagues in the Democratic Party are owned by APAC and since you've been in office, AOC, Jamal Bowman, Rashida Tlaib, all of you, all of you, you know, you, you remain associated with a political party and an institution that doesn't respect you. Hey, folks, do you feel secure in the hands of the Justice Democrats? Do you feel that we should give them a second chance or third chance? I, I don't know how many chances we've given them now. Let's just say this is their third and final chance. Let me let me be generous with this. I'm pretty sure all of you know the number already better than I do. But let's say this is their third chance. Hypothetically, humor me here for a moment. Humor me. Let's just hear this out here. Let's have democracy in the chat. Type one for Kit. This time they'll hear us. Kit, you awful man, you sexist, bigoted man, you awful, non-serious person. We got to help out the Justice Democrats because this time... It's going to be the right time, and we got to support them to stop Trump, and this time to hold Biden's feet to the fire. Type 2, man, I'm done. I'm done participating in this electoral system. I might vote independent, hell, I might not vote at all, but these people, these politicians are not getting my vote, period. Period. I wonder how many twos look in the chat. I wonder, I wonder. In the Sudan and all over the world, because babies should not be dying of starvation under any circumstances. And so because we are leading with love and humanity, that is destroying DMFI's paper tiger Wizard of Oz power. And it's destroying APAC's paper tiger Wizard of Oz power. They don't got nothing more power. What's up, my brother? How you doing, man? Appreciate that. Appreciate that. See, we got random black men just dapping us up in the street. I don't know if that's a random person or not. That could have been one of the staffers pretending to be a random person. I I, I, I challenge the authenticity of that one. Because they know the work we do. They don't have nothing. DMFI, APAC ain't got nothing on my sister, Cori Bush, and the power she brings to Congress, or Summer Lee, or Rashida, or Ilhan, or AOC, or Ayanna, or Dilia. They don't got nothing on us as individuals, and they don't got nothing on us collectively. So the partner with us and JD and Jay -Z for, Gen Z for Change and every other organization out there, us collectively, we are going to take down APAC this election cycle. First, Summer Lee winning her election in a couple weeks, then pivoting to our election June 25th, then pivoting right to Corey's election. One, two, three. Bomb, bomb, bomb. Bomb, bomb, bomb. 
Now, this goes on for another hour and, well, 10 minutes. And I'm not going to put you guys through that. But what can we learn from the Justice Democrats in brand new Congress? What, what can we learn from them right now? This is a desperate attempt to rebuild their coalition. Now, what made them relevant? Of course, 2016 was the cat was the catalyst that started all off. It was Bernie Sanders, the whole idea of bringing in a ruckus. How can you forget the stadiums upon stadiums in which Bernie Sanders filled up something that Hillary Clinton and Joe Biden failed to do? Hillary Clinton in 2016 couldn't do that. And Joe Biden couldn't do it in 2020. Of course, there was a pandemic. But before the pandemic took root, before it had a stranglehold over our minds and our well, our everyday lives, Bernie was filling in the crowds. But little did we know that Bernie Sanders was a nutless wonder. And between that time period and 2018 was the 2018 midterm election cycle in which we saw AOC and the squad come into formation. But it was just that in name only. We never really got the ruckus. We never got the fighters. And when we asked them to stand up for force to vote, they abandoned us. Same thing for the March for Medicare for All, the fight for student debt forgiveness, the fight for our infrastructure, hell, the fight for a $15 minimum wage. Nowhere to be seen. Nowhere to be heard. And yet, they are still more than happy to comply with the Democratic establishment. Never forget, never forget that they were still gung-ho to even support wars. Wars? What do you mean? How could the Justice Democrats, these politicians who fight for progressive values, how could they ever, ever stand for war? Well, they did so with the war in Ukraine. The same war that right now is taking up so many lives. And it's all could have been stopped. So I'll at least have a palate cleanser. Because when you do challenge these politicians, when you bring the ruckus to them, they get scared. Congresswoman, none of this matters unless there's a nuclear war, which you voted to send arms and weapons to Ukraine. Tulsi Gabbard, she's left the Democratic Party because there are women who are us. Okay? You originally voted, you ran as an outsider, yet you've been voting to start this war in Ukraine. You're voting to start a thermonuclear war with Russia and China. Why are you playing with the lives of American citizens? You're playing with our lives. There will be no neighbors if there's a nuclear bomb. You voted to mobilize and send money to Ukrainian Nazis. You're a coward. You're a progressive socialist. Where are you against the war mobilization? He's telling the right truth. You have done nothing. Tulsi Gabbard has shown guts where you've shown cowardice. I believed in you and you became the very thing you sought to fight against. That's what you've become. You are the establishment and you are the reason why everybody will end up in a nuclear war unless you choose to stand up right now and denounce the Democratic Party. Will you do that? Yes or no? Okay, simple. Are you going to stop nuclear war? Yes or no? There is no line because this is bullshit. None of this matters if we're all dead. None of it. You know that. That's what the ruckus looks like. Now, Jose Vega, he is running for office. I've interviewed him on our show, and I'll actually post his most recent interview in the description box as well as in the comment section as well. well these are the same people that AOC, Jamal Bowman, Rashida Tlaib tell to calm down, to be quiet. And now they're begging us for votes again. They're begging you for votes. And to be clear, look, I find APAC to be disgusting, but what I find repulsive is that you that the, a lot of these people, Justice Democrats, brand new Congress, our revolution, DSA, think you can reform or change the Democratic Party from within. The bear's going to eat you, but you can't change the bear inside. The bear's going to crap you out. Then let's take it up right now, because this is the only thing that matters. This is the only thing that matters right now. We could be in a nuclear war at any minute and you continue to fund it. That's what's going on. Why not right now? You're the liar here. Nobody has hold you accountable. That's what's happening. And it is time for you to stand up and realize that what you've been saying has been lies. Let your conscience come through for once. Well done. 
Well done. Well done. That's how you bring the ruckus. That's how you change things. That's how you fight for a better future. That's how you push back. That's something the squad will never do, but yet they are begging now for votes. I don't know what the voter turnout is going to be for this election cycle, especially as we get to November. But as we have covered on this show, people like Cory Bush and Jamal Bowman are going to be struggling for voters because voters are not enthusiastic about the Democratic Party. A lot of this has to deal with Joe Biden and his administration and all the failures surrounding it. The instability, the economic uncertainty, the system is falling apart. And when we ask these people to fight, they said no. But like any kind of abusive partner in a relationship, they'll be more than happy to change their ways as soon as you start to wisen up and leave them.